This tutorial is brought to you by Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh Inobakure and welcome to Olufemi Tutorials. Hey, what's up guys? Josh here. I wanted to show you guys this video that I created a few months ago. Occupy the throne of my heart. Thou hast loved me, espoused me, received me, purchased, washed, adorned me, when I was worthless, vile, soiled, polluted. Now, the defining characteristic of this video is the way that the text was created. It's essential that your text looks just as professional as your video. First of all, I animated the opacity of the text using the animator in After Effects. And then I used a well-known effect made by Giorgio using um, a screen glitch to create this really cool glitchy effect. This is a well-known effect that I've been seeing being used all over the place. And lastly, I added a slight blur effect to the text. Alright guys, we are in After Effects. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a new composition. We're going to go to Composition Settings. We're going to name this Comp 1. We're going to make sure that the width is 1920 and the height is 1080. We're going to make sure the frame rate is 23.976. And we're going to make sure that the pixels are square pixels. We're then going to click OK. Now we're going to right click and we're going to do new. We're going to go to new text and we're going to type the text out that we want to use. We're going to type espoused. Perfect. Now we're going to go into the text and we're going to animate the text. We're going to click on the animate triangle and we're going to click on opacity. Now we're going to go into the range selector. Then we're going to go into advanced. And then we're going to check a few of these out. So we're going to go to units. We're going to make sure that units are on percentage. We're going to make sure that it's based on characters. We're going to make sure the mode is on add. We're going to look at the shape and we're going to make the shape be ramp up. Perfect. Now we're going to go to randomize order and we're going to go to on and then we're going to do a little something here we're going and then we're going to randomize the seed what we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of keyframes in random seed all right now we're going to go in and we're going to make sure all of these Random seeds are of different values. Now we're going to make sure that the opacity is turned down to 73. This opacity is basically telling um, After Effects that as far as the animator goes, the minimum opacity is going to be 73. So as we play through this, you can see that the opacity is now flickering. The animator is working. Now we're going to go down to transform and we're going to actually edit the overall opacity. And we're going to bring that to 80, let's say 85. What this is, is this opacity is not the same as this opacity. This opacity is just for the animator. This is the overall opacity within text. And it's going to basically say, whatever you do in here, it doesn't matter. I'm going to make sure that the max opacity is going to be 85. So what the animator saying is saying is that it's starting at 73. And this is kind of the global opacity, making sure that the opacity doesn't ever go above 85. And so what you see is you have a flickering text. The brightest, the highest the opacity is, is 85, and the lowest is 73. The reason I made sure that the highest opacity wasn't 100% is when I put footage below this, when I bring this back into Premiere, it's going to allow the, the footage to show through the text just a little bit, and it's going to add to that really professional look that I like. It's going to make the text look less like it's just floating on top of the footage, but make it look more film-like, like it's attached to the footage. 
So uh, the other thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually put a blur, a Gaussian blur. We're going to go into effects. I already have blur typed in, but we'll type it in again. Blur, Gaussian blur, and we're going to put blur on top of this, on top of the espouse text. Now, close all this, go to effects, blur, and we're going to add the blurriness. We're going to change the blurriness to maybe like 2. 0.5 let's say and that just added a tiny bit of blurriness to the text and that again just kind of um, cements this professional look so that the text does not look like a an effect that's just on top of the footage but it's going to look kind of blurred into the footage make it look more attached to the footage if you notice too that when I typed the text I made sure the font was Gotham it's very important to have a a a font See, I put Gotham right there as my font. You want to make sure that your text font is going to be an acceptable font. If it doesn't look professional, it's going to make the text look horrible. Okay, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to add a glitch to this text. Now, again, this glitch effect was made popular by Giorgio, a fellow YouTuber. And... I've seen this effect being used all over the place. So congrats to Giorgio. I'm actually not going to completely just copy his tutorial. If you would like to see a complete version of the tutorial, um, feel free to click on his video right here. I'm actually just going to use um, a little bit that I learned from it regarding the displacement map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go onto YouTube and search for any kind of screen glitch effect footage. Then I'm going to download that footage. I use a website called keepavid.com to rip videos off of YouTube. And then I'm going to import the file, bring the file into After Effects, and I'm going to bring the file then into my composition. And then I'm going to right click and create a new adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is basically a layer that whatever effect you put on that layer, it affects everything below it. So I'm going to type the effect that we learned from Giorgio called displacement map. And we're going to add that effect onto the adjustment layer. Now, as you can see, you can see this screen glitch playing, we're actually going to blind this track because we actually don't need to see it for it to work. We're going to then go into adjustment layer again, and we're going to go into the effect controls, and we're going to change the displacement map layer to the screen glitch layer, the one, the layer below it. I just want to remind you guys that this screen glitch layer is blinded. We do not want to see it. Make sure that the eye is turned off. Now, as you can see, you can see that the text below is being affected by the displacement map, which is on the adjustment layer. And the displacement map is pulling from the glitch stock footage because we have here the displacement map layer is the, is the glitch stock footage. So it's kind of interesting how all three of these layers are working in tandem to create this really cool effect. Now, we only want this effect to apply to the beginning part of the clip. So we're going to go and we're going to cut this so that the adjustment layer only exists for the first part of the text. So we're going to make sure the adjustment layer is just over the beginning of the text. And then as soon as the adjustment layer ends, the wiggling ends because the glitch is no longer being applied to the text. Pretty cool. Um, now I want to actually go in to the adjustment layer and I want to take a closer look at displacement map. Displacement map is a very, very cool tool. And I want to show you guys that there are actually parameters that you can use to affect the effect even more. So you can have even more horizontal displacement by doing that. You could even have vertical displacement, change the effect in that way. We're going to put it back to five where it was, but as you can see, I, maximized the, I, I increased the horizontal displacement and that basically 
This makes the clip the effect more extreme in the horizontal direction. So you can apply this effect anywhere. It doesn't have to be text. Um, you can make anything glitch, whether it be um, a logo like Giorgio did or um, or any kind of footage. So I'd like you guys to basically play around with both of these effects, whether it be the displacement map or the opacity animator. And I'm sure you can find an even better way to apply both of those effects. Now, lastly, guys, if you take a look at the video that I made, you'll see that there are a lot of extra things going on. There's all these different little graphics that are popping in and out, creating an even cooler look around the text. What that is is simply an effect that I actually made that's actually part of my identity collection. This is an effect that you can actually buy on LuxuryLeaks.com for only $5. Basically, it's not really even an effect. It's just a bunch of footage and graphics to basically give your footage a more chaotic look. Now we're ready to export. To export, you got to make sure that your timeline is clicked. You're going to go to File. You're going to go to Export. And then you're going to go to Add to Render Queue. Now, these settings are crucial. You're going to keep it on Best Settings. Click OK. You're going to go to Lossless. And you're going to make sure that your format is correct. I'm going to have my format be AVI because I know it's going to be a intermediate codec, meaning I'm not going to have any compression during my export because I want to bring this back into Premiere and I don't want to bring a compressed file into, Comp into Premiere. I want to make sure that I'm exporting an uncompressed file out of After Effects so that when I bring it back into Com Premiere, I can then compress it during my final export. Now it's important that my channels are not RGB, but RGB plus alpha. R RGB plus alpha means that I'm going to keep my alpha channels. This means that any transparency that I have will be saved. That means all this black right here will stay transparent. Black means transparent. If I actually had this back on RGB, then all this black would just be a black solid. And so when I place this text on top of my footage in Premiere, I wouldn't see my footage underneath. It would just be this text and blackness. When I change this to RGB alpha, it makes it this be text and it makes all this blackness be transparency so that anywhere you see black, you're actually going to see whatever track is underneath it. So we want a an export out of After Effects that includes the alpha channels, meaning it, it includes the transparency. So we're going to do OK. Now here, we're going to select where we want to output this to. We're going to output this to desktop. Then we're going to say save. And then you do render. And now the last step, after you export your file out of After Effects, you bring that same file into Premiere and you place it right on top of your footage. If you exported it correctly out of After Effects, you should have saved your transparency. So anything that was black in After Effects should now be transparent and you should be left with the text right on top of the footage in Premiere. Thanks for watching. What's up guys, Josh here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to use After Effects to apply digital makeup to people.